loving greetings and pranams to our worldwide spiritual family of Paramahansa Yogananda's followers and friends gathered together on this very joyous occasion all around the world. It's such a joy to feel that though I'm sitting here in our beautiful and sacred chapel at the Mother Center, where our Guru lived for so many years, that all of you from all over the United States and Canada and North America and South America and Europe and Africa and Asia and India, Australia, New Zealand, and all points in between are joining us for this auspicious and joy-filled and love-filled occasion. Welcome. God bless you all. I'd like just to say a few words before we begin about our program today. I think most of you know that this is not going to be a class or a lecture. Uh, rather, the commemoration of the birthdays and the Mahasamadhis of the great gurus and SRF and YSS, these are primarily meant to be experiential. In other words, darshan, as it's called in India. It's an opportunity to immerse our consciousness in the divine presence, in the special transmission of blessings that flows from the Master being celebrated that day. And of course, we do this at uh, Christmas time for the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And uh, that's when we have our all day Christmas meditation. And we do it throughout the year on the special days honoring Krishna, Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, and Paramahansa Yogananda. So today, all of the monks and nuns in all of our ashrams here in America and Germany and India, we're all gathered together to unite in this special day of, of reverential communion with our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda. So all of you, please join in with that, that consciousness of coming for darshan. You know, the Guru's presence, his vibrations, they're always very strong here at the Mother Center and in all of the places that he blessed but even more so on these special holy days that are dedicated to him, such as we have today. So with that in mind, let's begin with an opening prayer. Close your eyes. Calm the mind and the feelings. Open the heart. And as we pray, feel that each one of us is making a very real connection with that omnipresent love and blessing and joy that is flowing to us. Please pray after me, Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, and you, our revered Guru, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Guru, lead us from darkness to light, from ignorance to wisdom, from restlessness to peace, from desires to contentment, from sorrow to bliss, 
from death to immortality. Revered Guru, we come to offer to you all the love of our hearts, all the gratitude of our souls for your constant blessings, support, and guidance every day of our lives. Receive our love. Receive our devotion. Om, peace, amen. Now I'm going to light the candle and the incense at the altar. And as I do so, feel that This lamp is symbolic of the divine light that the Guru brings into our lives. And the incense represents our purified heart's devotion that flows to this divine Guru and from him to our father, mother, friend, beloved God. Now I'm going to invite Brother Vishwananda to perform on this occasion the ancient and beautiful Arati ceremony. Just a few words about it. Arati, according to many experts, means that this is a ceremony whereby we bring in the light to remove the darkness. Arati is that which removes the darkness. And today we'll be doing a, a brief version of it, not the elaborate ceremony as is sometimes done in temples in India. In the full version, there's, um, in addition to the offerings of, of light, the, represented by the lighted oil lamps and the flowers as we're going to have today. And sometimes also there's Offerings of, um, of five different substances, uh, different uh, um, items that represent the five elements that pervade all creation, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. But today we'll just have the light and the flowers and accompanied by a ringing of bells and blowing of conch shells. And as I said, the incense burning represents the purified state of our hearts and minds. And the arati ceremony is done always with a, a deeply reverential concentration of the heart and mind. And the five oil lamps that Brother Vishwanandaji will be offering, these represent, among other things, the five senses. So our senses, heart and mind, through this ceremony, we offer into the divine to be purified, to be awakened. And of course, the bell and the conch shell signify the, the great creative vibration of Om that resounds through the whole universe. So as we, as Brother Vishwanandaji performs this ceremony, meditate on that light and that sound of God and feel the presence of God 
and the presence of the divine in our great guru, banishing all darkness, filling us with strength, filling us with encouragement, the all-comforting presence of the Om vibration that flows into our lives through God and Guru. Remember, Guru is the dispeller of darkness. So now let us have the Arati ceremony, brother. Now please join and let us all chant together to the Guru, that beautiful chant, Deliver Us From Delusion. And we'll be singing along with the Monks Kirtan group, led by Brother Devananda, from a convocation of past years. And the reason I'm using this one is so that I can hear all of your voices and you can hear each other. Thousands and thousands of voices, just as is happening in reality right now during this ceremony. So let us all chant together and then we'll have a brief period of meditation.
thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy guru, thinking in thy heart, lotus feet of thy guru, if you want to cross the ocean. Ocean of illusion, shaming the white lotus and purity, shaming the white lotus and purity beyond all duality. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from delusion. Guru image of Brahma, deliver us from.
peace. Amen. You know, during our Guru's lifetime, the disciples uh, used to celebrate his birthday with a birthday cake and candles and so on on January 5th. It was a very, very joyous occasion, divinely joyous occasion. And you can listen to his words on some of those occasions on the recordings that we have available. The, for instance, um, Beholding the One in All and Awaken the Cosmic Dream. But when we think about it, really, as joyous and as wonderful as those occasions were with the festive banquet and so on, the real spiritual banquet is meditation. Meditation with the Guru is the real spiritual banquet. It's a banquet that feeds us with spiritual light and joy. So let's feel that today, that we are participating in that way. Let's feel that by practicing together an affirmation from Gurji's Whispers from Eternity. And this one I chose is particularly applicable right now in this time when the dark clouds perhaps, of uncertainty and fear are hovering over so much of our planet and its people. So feel that that spiritual light is permeating our consciousness and radiating outward. Visualize and repeat with closed eyes. O oh, all-pervading spirit, the breeze of thine inspiration has banished all clouds. The firmament of my mind is clear. With purified eyes, I behold everywhere only thee. The sunshine of thy joy penetrates to the innermost depths of my being. With the hunger of ages, I feed upon thy light. Now let's affirm that again. O oh, all-pervading spirit, the breeze of thine inspiration has banished all clouds. The firmament of my mind is clear. With purified eyes, I behold everywhere only Thee, only Thee. The sunshine of Thy joy penetrates to the innermost depths of my being. The sunshine of Thy joy penetrates to the innermost depths of my being. With the hunger of ages, I feed upon thy light. The sunshine of thy joy penetrates to the innermost depths of my being. With the hunger of ages, I feed upon thy light. Feel that with all the yearning of your whole being, with the hunger of ages, I feed upon thy light. Feel that sunshine of joy permeating your body, mind, and whole being, filling the very cells with light and divine joy. And let's affirm again from scientific healing affirmations, visualizing and feeling that sunshine of divine joy. The little cells all are drinking. Their tiny mouths 
all are shining. The little cells all are drinking. Their tiny mouths all are shining. With the hunger of ages, I feed upon thy light. The little cells all are drinking. Their tiny mouths all are shining. The little cells all are drinking. Their tiny mouths all are shining. This spiritual banquet, of course, is not just on this occasion today. We'll continue our spiritual celebration of the anniversary of Guruji's birthday by our special six-hour meditation to be held on this coming Saturday. So this is to give us a taste of that spiritual banquet on this wonderful anniversary of our Guru's birth. You know, looking back, it was one year ago, sitting right here, that we inaugurated the SRF centennial anniversary, the 100th year since Paramahansa Yogananda came to America and began his mission worldwide. And it's hard to believe, looking back, this was before all of this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, it's a time, it seems like another age, doesn't it, looking back with all we've been through. But I look at it this way. I think that this pandemic and the other various challenges that came in the year 2020, these showed, and perhaps more effectively than any anniversary celebration or ceremony, they showed the meaning and true value of Paramahansa Yogananda's life and mission. How do I know this? Well, one reason is because of the hundreds hundreds of letters and messages and, and um, uh, expressions that have come to us from all over the world, from Europe, from India, all over the United States and South America. Let me share a few of these with you because I think this is a fitting way to not only look back with joy and honor in this centennial year, which we are now bringing to a close, but also to look forward. <clears throat> one, uh, one devotee from Italy wrote this. This has been a terrible year for many people and for humanity as a whole. But as far as I am concerned, the record so far is more than positive. Like many other SRF members around the world, I had the immense joy and privilege of being able to follow the important events that marked the centennial year of Guru Dave's arrival in America. And another one from Europe, this from a devotee in Germany who said, thank God that he sent Paramahansa Yoganandaji from India to the West. And thank you, SRF, for the special convocation, the many other spiritual talks and meditations and kirtans, etc. Especially during this year with the pandemic, they gave us new joy, hope, peace, and force in this uncertain time. And again, a similar thought. Devotees from Encinitas have written, Although the year 2020 was full of challenges and hardships of many kinds, it also paved a great way for devotees to go inward and taste self-realization more and more. Not only did we quarantine at home, we also quarantined our extraneous thoughts and deeds. The year provided us a good opportunity to immerse in Master's encouraging words in the midst of adverse circumstances. 
And again, another devotee wrote, during this pandemic, I have become a much more disciplined and dedicated devotee. With the assistance of the online meditations and services and virtual pilgrimages and so on, it has been most needed and appreciated. And lastly, one devotee couple from our Phoenix temple wrote, what could have been a bad year turned out to be a year of great growth and development. All the online offerings have brought into the lives of all the devotees a deeper connection with Guru, a deeper connection with Guru and with our Guru's worldwide family. I was so touched to read that, and I, I'm sure that our Guru was very, very also touched and pleased to know that for so many of you around the world, this year, despite its very real challenges and difficulties, in the end has been a deepening of that relationship with the Guru, that most important of human relationships, the Guru-Disciple relationship. And you may remember some of you during the convocation when I was uh, summarizing some of the key contributions that our Guru made to the world during his lifetime. And among them was this, was to bring back to the world a true understanding of the Guru-Disciple relationship. And that has been from time immemorial, the means whereby real seekers of God progress on the path back to him. But the real meaning of that relationship has been lost sight of for many centuries. So, again, this is the world of duality. We have light and we have dark. We have difficulties and we have blessings. But all through the incredible variety of experiences, the true devotee, the one grounded in that good or disciple relationship, is always looking to the pole star of the presence of God and Guru, the guiding light that takes us through any experiences, through any difficulties, through any challenges that the world can throw at us. That is the Guru-Disciple relationship, and that is what we are primarily honoring and celebrating and receiving in a deeper way on this holy occasion. You know, Jesus gave such a beautiful description of the Guru-Disciple relationship when he spoke this parable to the disciples and said, What man among you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, he does not, doesn't he leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and carries it back to the divine fold. Our Guru Paramahansa Yogananda expressed that same eternal love and care and concern of the Guru for his disciples in this beautiful poem that he wrote that so many of you know, but just Close your eyes and listen to these words, this excerpt from this poem, God's Boatman, which has such great meaning for us on our Guru's birthday. He said, I want to ply my boat many times across the gulf after death and return to earth's shores from my home in heaven. I want to load my boat with those waiting thirsty ones who are left behind and carry them by the opal pool of iridescent joy where my father distributes his all desire quenching liquid peace. Now think of this on this day when our Guru was born on earth. He said, oh, I will come again and again crossing a million crags of suffering. With bleeding feet I will come, if need be, a trillion times, so long as I know one stray brother is left behind. A 
100 years ago, Paramahansaji landed on these western shores to seek out those stray brothers and sisters who would need his help. And now, as we complete that centennial year, let's do so with an undiminished appreciation of the truth in those poetic lines that we just listened to. Remind ourselves, he came for me. I am one of those waiting thirsty ones whom he came to lead to God. Paramahansa Ji had this to say about the guru-disciple relationship. He said, when you are steadfast in the principles of the guru-disciple relationship, the spiritual path becomes very easy. Think of that. The spiritual path becomes very easy. You cannot then go astray. Because no matter how delusion tries to pull you away, the master who has experienced God knows your trouble. And he will help you to steady yourself on the path again. That is what the guru does for you if you are in tune with him. Even though you and the guru may be thousands of miles apart, his help will reach out to you. I feel my own master with me all the time even though he is no longer incarnate on this earth plane, to have the guidance and grace of Guru with you, that is the easiest way to move on the spiritual path. Going back to some of the messages that have come in over Christmas time and at the end of the year, let me share just a couple more that that echo the realization that so many thousands and thousands of you around the world are feeling in confirmation of those words of our Guru. One member in Australia wrote this, 2020, as we are all aware, has been a year like no other. But the way in which the Guru, through SRF, has given me such a wealth of treasures for my spiritual toolbox has been so positive and has helped me to manage that difficult time. And again from Canada, when the whole world is engulfed in dark clouds of worldwide pandemic, SRF has helped so many of us remain positive and focused on the light. That again is the blessing of the Guru disciple relationship. We have to tune in. And as we tune in, we feel the reality of that light flowing to us, dispelling all darkness. That's the relationship that we forge with our Guru and that we honor and celebrate in this devotional service today. Feel that light. Tune in with that blessing. Paramahansaji said, I rely on no other principle but the divine principle, and its healing light flows steadily through my calmness. It flows through his calmness into the lives of each one of us who make ourselves receptive. He says, most persons are opaque with restlessness, and that is why they're always sort of an annoyance to other people. Isn't that the truth? But he said, you should be a transparent jewel through which God can shine to others. Try it out. Try it out, he said. Be that transparent jewel through which God can shine to others. And he also said this. He said, if there is ever a break in the flow of divine happiness, then there's something wrong in your consciousness, some kink that needs to be worked out and removed with the help of your guru. By, by maintaining steady communion with him, Guruji says, through daily meditation and by following his precepts, the sadhana he has given you, he will straighten out that kink for you. That's the promise of the Guru. You know,
You know, I always, I always enjoy the fact that the celebration of Guruji's birthday comes really as part of our Christmas and then New Year's holiday season. It's so meaningful. It's very meaningful. You know, think about it. First, we have the vibrations of Christ consciousness augmented by the blessings of Jesus and our own Guru during our long meditations during the Christmas season we have just completed. And then on the heels of that comes the, the new year with its fresh energy and vibrations of the desire to change, the desire to renew ourselves. And I always think of the celebration of our master's birthday on January 5th is really it's a, in many ways, just a, a, an opportunity to consciously combine both of those two energy sources and infuse and personalize them with the additional power of the Guru disciple relationship. So let's use this occasion as an opportunity to charge ourselves with that divine light of Christ consciousness and with the powerful enthusiasm of the New Year consciousness and with the blessings of the Guru. And by doing that, let's launch into 2021 as if it were a new birth and a new world. These words are from a poem that he wrote to his own guru, and this expresses so much this, this consciousness that, uh, that we're speaking of. Gurji wrote, Rise, sleeping world, awake. Rise, sleeping world, awake. Sons of God have come to take the burden of your cries away. O awakener of the Christ in me, with loving reverence, I bow to thee. Rise, sleeping world, awake. Sons of God have come to take the burden of your cries away. That's the devotional experience. That's the realization that I'm praying that each one of you will feel today in this ceremony. You know, as I said in my, my New Year's letter to all of you, you know, certainly this past year has been one of great challenges. It's been all around the globe a challenging year. But underlying those difficulties, a spiritual lesson is very clear, it's very evident, one that the followers of this path will easily recognize. And that is the growing realization, that lasting healing for the discords that this earth is going through can't be found in any outer solutions alone, but only by our inner attunement with God. It was really such an example of divine timing, wasn't it? That this past year of, you might say, urgent prods to a deeper connection with the eternal laws of truth, that that coincided with that centennial anniversary of our Guru's mission to spread the soul awakening science of meditation, of Kriya Yoga worldwide. So as we enter a new year, my prayer is that each of us resolves that we are going to take full advantage of the spiritually awakening meditation techniques and teachings that Paramahansa Ji bestowed on the world. Let this be a fresh start. Let this be a fresh start in our life and let our own enthusiasm and efforts to meditate deeply contribute not only to our own well-being, but to the harmony and wisdom and divine love that are so much needed by our human family. It's interesting, you know, scientists who study the human body and mind and brain, in recent years they've researched a lot about this ability of the mind and the brain to change itself, to renew itself. And they call it neuroplasticity. You know that term? You know that word? Plasticity means to, to put in a flexible, a malleable condition. 
And this neuroplasticity, this is the, the power to re rewire, remold the, literally the biochemical and electrical pathways and the patterns that define who we are or who we think we are, which in this world is pretty much amounts to the same thing. And how blessed we are to have been given really the pure distillation of India's ancient science of neuroplasticity. That's one way of thinking of the yoga science of meditation. It spiritualizes the brain cells and it's in our own highest benefit. It's in our highest benefit to remember always to put those techniques into practice. And remember, as Guruji said, the self-improving man is the increasingly happy man. Self-improving, we can use these techniques to literally rewire our brain, to free ourselves into a vaster realm of new possibilities. Now, I bring this up today for one reason, because if you think about it, in essence, the most effective technique of neuroscientific transformation of our lives, our personality, our habits, our moods, our whole being, these are embodied in the guru-disciple relationship. The most powerful and effective techniques of neuroscientific transformation. And in that most holy of all human relationships, that's what we're reverently celebrating today. And if we truly understand what the guru is and how to attune ourselves with the guru, that will change us. It will change us. It will evolve us. It will exalt us more quickly and more surely than any other protocol or system of personal growth or healing ever discovered. Think about that. You all know the techniques that I'm talking about. Just by lifting the gaze and the position of the eyes to the Christ Consciousness Center, the center of Kutastha Chaitanya, that eternal consciousness at the point between the eyebrows, as we're taught in the lessons. Just by doing that, we begin the process of remolding our brain pathways. It puts the Consciousness in a receptive state, in a plastic state, you might say. And it attunes the consciousness to the higher forces. That's the first step, the first phase of the yoga techniques. And the second one, again, that we know from the lessons, the second one is the practice of pranayama, especially Kriya Yoga. We have to realize, we have to apply, we have to cling to that realization that by long and deep meditation, the way that Guruji has taught us in the Kriya Yoga science, first of all, the life energy or prana, it's pulled away from its outer flow, from its dissipation in the outer world, in the muscles, in the senses, and the restless mind, and it becomes powerfully concentrated in the spine and brain. That life force, that prana, that has the power to rewire the neural pathways. That's the power of this yoga science of divine transformation. And then it gets so deep and so beautifully sweet and personal because after applying those first two steps, then if we continue to gaze into that spiritual center and the point between the eyebrows and the spiritual eye, and we deeply deeply call to God and Guru, or deeply affirm again and again any change or improvement that we want to be manifest in our consciousness and in our life, we will receive from the superconscious mind the divine grace that gradually and sometimes even instantaneously transforms us. My friends, these are, this is just a small part of the 
you might say, the deeper esoteric aspect of the guru-disciple relationship. It's science. It works. And I can't recommend strongly enough or often enough to make the SRFYSS lessons a regular part of your daily routine. Now, I know many of you have completed the 18 basic lessons in the new series and the new expanded Kriya Yoga lessons. Now go on with the supplement lessons from our Guru that were made available in recent months and will go on for a few years. What a wonderful way that is to continue in the divine blessings and power that we've experienced during this centennial year of SRF. It's a wonderful way to continue in that, in that trend. And all of what I'm talking about here is in those lessons. All of these techniques, all of these powerful tools to take the inspiration of the higher divine Christ consciousness, the energy and enthusiasm of the new year, and infuse it with the blessings of the good or disciple relationship and use that to launch ourselves into a new life in this coming year. It's all there in the lessons. Believe me, if you take them seriously, if you take them reverently, they'll change your life. And in doing so, help to change the world. So let's use this sacred anniversary to make and renew that deep, deep inner connection of attunement with the Guru. I think and I know from uh, so many of you that have written, so many of you that I've had the joy of getting to know over the years, how deeply each of us feels there's no greater blessing to be grateful for than the gift, the divine dispensation in our lives of the light and grace and power and help and guidance that flows to us through that good or disciple relationship. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. It's all a matter of attunement. And that attunement is laid out for us step by step by step, so lovingly, so encouragingly, so divinely, in our Guru's way of life, the spiritual disciplines, the sadhana that he's imparted to us. So let's use this sacred anniversary to make that, that deeper connection. Take these words of our Guru to heart. He said, to disciples who are mentally attuned with him, the Guru transmits the light of God that flows through him. I know many, many people have been changed that way. He's talking to you. Feel this. Those who tune in feel that energy coming to them from the darshan of a saint or master. And their brain cells are changed. Those who are in tune feel that energy coming to them from the darshan of a saint or master, and their brain cells are changed. And Guruji assures us, if the devotee with deep mental concentration broadcasts to his guru, the guru receives and likewise silently sends forth the help needed. If the devotee with deep concentration mentally broadcasts to his guru, the guru receives and likewise silently sends forth the help needed. So now at the conclusion of our ceremony, as is traditional, each one of us can make our own personal offering at the picture, at the image of the guru, and receive that blessing. I'll go first. I'm going to offer flower petals here at the altar. And afterwards, each of you individually, if you have them, 
Make an offering in front of the picture or the altar there in your own home, wherever you are. And do so with the deepest devotion, deepest reverence and gratitude. Feel that as you gaze into his eyes, as you gaze into the, that beautiful countenance in these divine photographs and images of the Guru that we are blessed to have, feel that he is sending the light of spirit into all the cells of your body, into all the cells of your brain, awakening you, enlightening you, changing you. And in doing that, also affirm, as Guruji urges us, he said, affirm, I shall remold my consciousness. In this new year, I am a new person. And I shall change my consciousness again and again until I have driven away all the darkness of ignorance and manifested the shining light of spirit in whose image I am made. So first I will offer these flower petals and believe me, I'm doing it on behalf of all of you. I feel this connection that we have forged in our time together today. And it gives me, it's a great privilege for me to be able here at this holy altar at the Mother Center to make that prayer on your behalf for a deepening attunement, a deepening realization of that flow of the light of God into your lives through our blessed Guru. Now, as I offer the, the rose petals, we're going to chant and then we'll meditate. Let's chant with the Nuns Kirtan group, again from Convocation, led by Sister Ishwari. We're going to chant this uh, Indian bhajan, Sri Guru Sharanam. And the words are very simple. It's Sri Guru Sharanam, Namo, 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 and Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai Guru, Jai. Sharanam, Sharanam is a Sanskrit word. It means refuge or shelter or protection. You remember when, when our Guru met his own Guru, Swami Sri Teshwar, as he describes in Autobiography of a Yogi, when he said, a lifelong shadow lifted from my heart. The vague search hither and yon was over. I had found eternal shelter in a true guru. Namo means I bow, I bow to the guru. Jai guru means, of course, victory to the guru. And remember, that victory that he's working for in the lives of each of his disciples is nothing less than the complete liberation and freedom and salvation of our souls and for the upliftment of the world. So let's sing that beautiful song, Sri Guru Sharanam Namo Namo, and feel as the Gita counsel us, take Sharanam, take refuge in him with all the eagerness of thy heart. By his grace, thou shalt obtain the utmost peace and the eternal shelter. So let's chant now together, and then afterwards we'll meditate.
chanting silently, pouring out that heart's devotion and yearning and longing and reverence and gratitude. Let's meditate for a few minutes together. My beloved friends, companions on this divine path, I want to leave you before we close the ceremony today. I want to leave you with this very special and powerful benediction and blessing that our Guru spoke to his disciples right here in this very building, in this very chapel. And this is for all of you. He said, I am interested in the redemption of your souls. That is why I came here. I have but one desire, to see this work established in each soul, that you may, by your own realization, Feel and behold God templed everywhere. And with my love, I shall stoop down to help you wherever I may be. Those who will come to this work will feel my vibrations. I shall leave my vibrations and the vibrations of the masters. And those who come with a recipient heart will be illumined. 
That is my declaration and prophecy from God. Let us have our closing prayer together. Heavenly Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswarji, and you, our Guru, Paramahansa Yoganandaji, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Guru, may our lives ever become more pure more receptive and more open to the ceaseless inflow of your divine blessings. Beloved Guru, we offer at your feet the reverence and gratitude of our souls for all that you have brought, all that you continue to bring into our lives, day after day, year after year, ever leading us onward and upward to our home of light, our home of joy, our home of immortality. O Awakener of the Christ in me, with loving reverence, I bow to thee. Om. Peace. Amen. And may that light and that joy and that blessing of the Guru grow and expand and deepen. Remember to join in with us this coming Saturday as we continue the sacred observance of the birth of our beloved Paramahansa Yogananda with a six-hour meditation on January 9th. Please come. Come with all of your scientific, and especially your devotional effort. And go deep in that light, go deep in that transmission of divine blessings. Jai Guru, Jai Guru, God bless you all.